Mysticism. It's something that's discussed a great deal in circles relating to spirituality. You see a number of different social media groups and forums discussing mysticism, as well as different organizations trying to support people in their experience of mysticism and mystical explorations and things like that. Is mysticism spiritual? Is it religious? Is it both? Is it neither? What do we make of it? Today, I want to talk a little bit more about mysticism, particularly focusing on the mystical experience. As I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. First and foremost, mysticism itself is the sense, the connection, the communion, the union with something that we would consider absolute, something that we would consider the source of being or something that's the totality. Mysticism is about our experience. We describe that experience through the metaphors of our belief system. Whatever we believe we're connecting with, that's how we describe it. So for some people that has to do with God or a deity or a mystery. For other people, it has to do with an experience of connection with the energy behind life. For others, it has to do with a, a connection with nature. We describe our mystical experience as connecting with, as encountering, as coming to union and communion with something much greater than ourselves, something beyond us, something that's absolute. And our metaphors from our belief system help us define what that thing is. Simultaneously, Mysticism is not, and I repeat, it is not about doctrine and dogma. Our belief systems give us a language to talk about that the experience, but the mystical experience isn't about getting new knowledge about dogma, doctrine, clarification, new knowledge, new insights, understanding hidden mysteries of things that are or anything else that may be considered somehow Gnostic or spiritualism. Mysticism is about our encounter with something that is much larger than ourself. A metaphor that may be helpful for that is to understand mysticism in terms of our being a drop of water, encountering the ocean and going into the ocean. The drop of water remains a drop, but yet it's surrounded by the ocean. And in the ocean, it encounters what it encounters in the ocean. And then it returns to being a drop. And, and that's a lot what the mystical experience is like. So that mysticism isn't about our having a special gift or somehow being special. As soon as people who have mystical experiences begin thinking and talking about their being special, then they've missed something. Because mysticism isn't about our ego. Instead, it's the opposite. It's about letting go of ego. It's about letting go of ourselves so that we can step into this connection with something that's much greater than ourselves. And the experience itself can be very humbling because we, we become aware of how small we are in relationship to the totality of everything. Many people describe mystic, mystical experience as, as being peaceful and healing and bringing them to wholeness. And it indeed can be that. But remember that when we think about the totality of all that is, that which is absolute, there is a lot of pain and suffering. After all, people and the world suffer a great deal. People are in pain because of illness. They suffer because of violence and war and hunger and many other things. And the planet is suffering because of, of what humanity has done to it, causing climate change and so many other things. And when we're experiencing something mystical, we may encounter that pain as well, or some dimension of that pain. So that mysticism can lead us to something that is very beautiful and peaceful, and it can lead us into the suffering of the world or the planet. Both things are true. Some people experience more of one than the other, but eventually 
people who have regular mystical experiences will likely experience both. I know for myself that my experience that I would describe as mystical impact me in many different ways. The mystical experience brings me out of my body, but at the same time, so that I forget my body, I'm not aware of myself, but yet I can physically feel sensations, particularly in my chest and in my face, that are about that which I'm present to at that moment. After the experience, I feel very much peaceful, even if I've encountered something difficult. And my mind is very clear-headed. You know, people think that contemplative practice helps get you into mystical experience, and it can. Meditation and contemplation can be great doorways, as can more expressive things like indigenous drumming or Sufi dancing. But at the same time, anything can happen in life. So people can commune through nature or music or art and find a doorway open for them into mystical experience. Some years ago, a friend of mine explained to me what happened for him in mystical experience. And he described it in this way. He said, when it happens, I'm up and out of here. I'm just up and out of here. And he said that I know where I am, I have some recollection, but I'm much more aware of something well beyond me and much bigger than me. And I'm there and I know that I'm there and that I return to my body and where I've been. And he said, it's a very transformative thing. Have you had mystical experiences? What, the, what have they been like for you? Can you share some of that in the comments? Mystical experience can be a part of your regular spiritual life, but they are humbling and they really bring us in touch with something much deeper, a deeper reality, a deeper truth that can be very transformative for us. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and know that I appreciate the time you spend with spirituality beyond borders. Have a great day.